Hi guys, welcome back on my channel, Dorota Palitska International Nail Artist and Educator here. And today we are going to do another acrylic nail, because uh, you have requested quite a lot of that. And I thought I'm going to use my beautiful model. You can find me a name, best name for her, and let me know down in the comments below. Also tell me what you think of those type of designs. Uh, so you can have a wee preview of this beautiful wintery look in here. Yeah, and this is going to be uh, kind of like a blue glitter fade with a little bit of the sugaring because I love sugar for this time of the year and I hope you will really enjoy watching this tutorial. Let's start! <laughs> another acrylic tutorial for you and still in a wintery theme so I've got my beautiful model and I'm putting some tip underneath of her nail just so we can do a nice nail and um, you can also let me know down in the comments below like what would be a best name for her because I think it will be nice to give her some name I'm just um, shaping the free edge of the nail and giving a couple scratches. Obviously on the client I would uh, do a proper nail prep, then dehydrate it with the blue scrap and apply the universal air bond uh, before my acrylic application. Actually I might actually do it just the way I would do it on the client. So prep the natural nail, remove the dust, take a tiny bit of the blue scrap which is a nail dehydrator, we dehydrate the natural nail and then apply the nail form. So I've got my new perfect new form sculpting. This is actually the end of the roll, so they in a funny shape, quite difficult uh, to play with. But I'm just going to use this roll and then again grab a new one, camera man. See, I need a new <laughs> roll of the forms. But I've got a new brand new paint on French gel. So I've got the pair of the scissors. I've got the pair of the scissors and now I'm going just to trim the form so to the size of the finger so this is a one cut in here and then another cut in there just because I'm working on the finger I also want to get rid of those wee triangles so they don't disturb me when I'm applying the product on the client I wouldn't have to cut the triangles and I also I'm embarrassed of my nails I need to get them redone they are like over a month old now uh, and they start looking disgusting and I lose like two gems like you can see it I lose one huge gem in there I lose one in here as well so they in desperate need of getting done I just need to find some time actually to to be able to do it so what I have done I have closed the form a little bit okay so I have closed the form a little bit and now we are going to apply it, it on our beautiful model Okay, so once I'm happy, once it's in the middle, I'm start squeezing the form. This is going to be a medium size extension. We are going to do it with some marble. Okay, I'm I'm kind of fan of the form which goes more to the straight side. So I need to lift this form up a little bit. I don't want it to go too much down. Okay, and then once I'm happy with it, we can start uh, doing the, the design. So I'm just putting a little bit of the monomer in. Now I will start building the nail with the color in blush. I quite like it. Like I don't like working with the clear as a base. I think blush, any kind of like a pinky shade gives those nice healthy look to the nails, especially when the clients are coming back for like a rebalance after a long, long time. So I'm just picking up a decent uh, size bit to extend my free edge. Wait for the product to polymerize a little bit. Okay, 
and slightly extend the free edge. So this is not going to be overly too long needle, but long enough to show the shape and the design. So I'm just tidy up the sides, kind of sewing motion. Just so I can push them nice. A tiny bit more. Just to apply a little bit product at my natural nail. So just a tiny bit more angle brush. Just so I've got a very little product at the cuticle area. And just blend that out. Then our next step is to do some kind of marbly, bluish design so we can do some snowflakes on top of it. Uh, and I've got the perfect air, which is like a pearly blue. I think it's a pretty nice, uh, beautiful color. And I've got some white. So I'm going to work really wet now. And don't pick up too much product at the one time, okay? So I've got a little bit of my blue, white, and blue. White, white, blue, and white. And I'm start marbling. Okay, so I'm just picking up a small beads. You can drag through it with the brush as well. And marbling with acrylics is really easy. You cannot kind of go wrong with it. Okay, let's tidy up what we've got. So I'm just tapping it in, getting a nice shape. And filling up missing missing places. So again, tiny, tiny wee bit. Nice and flat around the cuticle area. And to, to be able to pick up like a small bits, I'm really um, using a tip of my brush. So that's my marbly part done. And now we just have to encapsulate it with the clear. So I've got some clear. Okay, quite wet again. Release the powder. Clean your brush. Close to the cuticle, working only with the tip of the brush. And now smooth everything out. Tidy up those free edge. And now wait for the product to polymerize so we can give it an extra, extra pinch. Okay, 
Okay, so you can just kind of check it how wet the product is and if it starts setting uh, then we can pinch it first of all with the fingers and then using the uh, tweezers just to get this kind of nice slender look to the needle and I much prefer it those kind of uh, those kind of look to the needle. It's still a little bit too wet. Just like when working with the marbles, um, which was pretty wet, we need to wait a couple seconds longer. Uh, so in the meantime, I can start searching for the products I need and tidy up like my desk. I always do it when I'm working on the client, like I like to have it kind of clean place so I can find the items I don't like to search too, too long time for, for the things. Okay, I'm almost there. Almost, almost there. Obviously on the human, the polymerization process takes a um, much shorter time just because the heat from the finger is kind of speeding up the curing process. And uh, here our model is <laughs> a bit cold. So the polymerization process takes a bit long time and it's still kind of a little bit sticky. If you pinch it too soon, you're going to move the product. And I really don't want that. I can peel the form away already. Can I? No, I can't. It's still too soon. The product is still quite cold, but I can cut this tape so my model looks more beautiful. And this tape is so useful, guys, like to be able to do the tutorials for you. Uh, I'm so happy I have tried it. There we are. So that's the form released. And I can pinch it now. So you would squish it in between your fingers to kind of give it those nice and slender look. And also the place I want to pinch is the... So on the natural needle I would pinch this place. Like that's the widest part of the needle and that's what we want to pinch the most. Okay. Make sure your tweezer pinch into the nice straight shape because sometimes with the pinching we can actually damage the shape of the needle and make it a squint. Okay, so I'm giving a decent pinch. When you're pinching on the client, make sure you've got an eye contact like you don't want to hurt client. This is so nicely pinched. Okay, and we can move on into the shaping of the needle. Of course, you could use your e-file uh, for the shaping. I'm just going to use the hand file. There is not as much really to file. So one side, other side. And I'm using a grid 100 for, the, for shaping, uh, especially the acrylics, which are much harder to file. We shorten that free edge. And my suggestions for a filing is don't file too much, like uh, file a little bit, check how your nail is looking. So like I would check how my nail is looking and then file another bit, okay? So I want to file this free edge a bit more, especially for a coffin shape. It has to be really nice and straight. Okay, and you can see it, we've got nice C curve. Um, we have to even out the product from the top and we have to even out the product around the cuticle area. So around the cuticle area, you have to always be really nice and neat. Like you don't want the product to be catchy in there. If you've got any uh, sticking out bits and pieces of the product or if you've got too much product, uh, the product is going to lift and your client's needles are not going to last. So this is very important part, okay? And then I need to remove, I've got a little bit too much on this side of the product. So I will take a file and I will first of all file the places when I'm kind of sure it is something wrong with them or there is too much product. And after removing that, you can take a brush, check it, how the things looks. And then smooth out all over. Okay, I really love this motion. It's my favorite one, especially for a coffin shaped needles. So 
So you just keep going like this. Until you happy. Okay, I also keep checking the hairline view. So like through the entire needle because I want to make sure it is kind of nice and even all over. This is really important. Okay, tiny bit more in here and then take my buffer. So when buffing the acrylics, it is really important that you use kind of rough buffer. If you use too smooth buffer, the gel is not going to stick to that. So I'm using a pretty smooth, like rough buffer to smooth out the surface. And then clean all the dust. Okay, so that's our nail shaped. And we can decorate it. And what I'm going to do is apply the top coat first. And again, like um, sugar is my favorite thing for a... Uh, for this time of the year and we are going to do sugary beets so apply the top coat put it inside the lamp to give it a proper cure so 60 seconds cure okay when my tip is curing i'm just going to put a tiny drop of the paint on french gel a perfect one for a sugar ring just so we can finish off the beautiful design so a drop of paint from French gel and now let's paint it so I'm using the D-liner brush and I love it, like it's so fantastic for a swirly beads. And I think for the winter designs, that's what you need to really do. A couple of the swirly beads. So I've got a blob of the product on my brush. And what I'm doing is like, I'm really kind of just dragging this blob of the product. Doing three lines and then I want to join this one. So a wee wave, a wave, and then drag it in. It is going to be like a kind of frost painting over it. Okay, so blob of the product, blob of the product, and another blob of the product. Then join that in. I would say it's almost like I'm painting a letter C. So it's just like letter C, letter A. It's like that's the easiest way to, to kind of paint the swirly beads. I'm just twisting on the side. One, two, and a third one. Join that in. Okay, ideally I want to turn the client finger a little bit to the side. Because I want to join it and so we've got those marble parts inside. 
one touch, second touch, drawing that in and prolong it. And then you're missing something there. So blob of the product, drag it in. And just something very tiny there. So we need to go letter C ish. And another one. And I smudged the one on the top. Oh no! So I'm just touching up the parts which I have damaged. And they are not as pretty as they were. Okay, so we have created those kind of frosty, frosty look to it. Just perfect for a winter time. And then sprinkle it with the glitter. So I'm putting a lid underneath and then sprinkle it. I love winter nails, like you've got so many different things like and sugar, I will use it, I think I use it for every single design and a set I do, uh, because it just adds those kind of wintery feel to it, wintery look. Okay, so sprinkle well. And the sugar does really last, guys. Like, I mean, it does really last. You should actually do some parts and uh, matte look as well. Um, there is a design which I have done it last year where you use a matte top coat and a shiny top coat to create kind of frosty look. Uh, so that will look really nice for this type of design as well. Like, if you didn't watch it, just go back and check those videos as well because they are absolutely amazing. Now, regarding the sugar, like, we need to cure it really well. And then remove the excess of the product so we can get a really nice long lasting results and it's very important that you've got always the shiny uh, high shine no wipe top gel like so that is um, the sparkle doesn't stick into the other places only to the places which you have painted with the paint on french gel if you don't have a paint on french gel that's the one i have used it you could also do it with the top coat um, with the gel polish, I would be pretty scared to use a glitter on its own. It could work with the um, clear acrylic powder. So what you could do is you could uh, paint it with the gel polish and then sprinkle with the clear acrylic powder. That would work as well. Um, or the top coat and the glitter. I quite like it with the white because I can also add a drop of different gel polishes uh, colors. So if I would add a drop of blue, I could create like a nice blue sugar uh, effect and uh, it is long lasting one now i'm just taking the brush to remove the dust and you can see what a beautiful frosty look we have created i hope you have really enjoyed watching this tutorial if you did let me know down in the comments below just to keep me motivated and do more of the acrylics uh, designs for you which i actually uh, which i actually how would i say it I'm not the acrylic person, like obviously I'm the gel girl like 100%, so it is really rare that I'm doing some kind of acrylics and I would say I'm still learning this technique as well uh, myself, uh, but uh, yeah, let me know down in the comments below uh, if you want to see more of those tutorials, glittery hacks and bye for now.